We're sitting here with Gary Hamrick. Thank you so much for visiting. Is this your first time, first time to Arizona? Or? Actually, not my first time to Arizona. I was here three months ago. Charlie Kirk invited me to come do an event with him in Phoenix. Yes. I ended up getting COVID while I was here. So thank you, Arizona, for 14 days. <laughs> oh, of the you best made memories. That's no, great. Yeah. Okay. But I got the antibodies, too. So my <laughs> second time here. Oh, yeah. okay. Well, welcome. Yeah. And I hope you have a healthier thank visit you. this yes, time I, around. Well, I hope so now, too. Yeah. You talked a little bit about... Um, everybody is about having living with an expectancy. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you think is the biggest culprit nowadays with those members of the church who are just like not living with that expectancy yeah. of the rapture? Maybe some who just flat out don't think it's going to happen, but they're just not worried about it right now. Why is that? What is stealing that hope from some of the church? I would say probably two things. Number one, they're not being taught. So a lot of Christians in the church today just don't even have a biblical understanding about the return of Christ. So they're not really watching and waiting because they have not been equipped from the pulpit like that. So that's important. Mm -hmm. I think the other thing is, honestly, people can just become wrapped up in this world. They're living for this world. They're living for their own ambitions. They're living for their own success, their own gains. So all they're thinking about is life here. They're not really thinking about what is to come. Their focus is not on Jesus. It's all about life now, the here and the present. And so it's either they're not really being equipped or they just don't have the right perspective. The world can steal our attention. The world can really, you know, steal our uh, affection. And we can end up loving the world and the things of the world instead of loving Jesus and looking forward to his return. You touched on something in your teaching that I was just talking about with my two daughters. I have a nine-year-old and a 16-year-old, mm. so pray for me. But, yeah. um, uh, you know, when we're young, we don't want the rapture to come. We want life to happen. We want to graduate. We want to get yeah. a boyfriend. We want to go to right. prom. We want to get married. And then when we're adults, it can't happen soon enough, like yesterday. Right. Like, why yeah. are we still here? Every morning I wake up, I'm like, really, Lord, why are we still yeah. here? What is that tweak that happens in life that just changes our perspective? Well, you know, when we're young and life is exciting, we haven't lived long enough to experience the hardships. When the longer you live and the more hardships you experience just because of life and we live in a fallen world, then you're ready to be rescued. You know, the older a person gets, I'm not saying that we become depressed, but we just have a greater understanding of the demands and the heaviness of this earth and the temptations of this world and just how discouraging life can become at times because we live in a fallen world. And so when we go through enough of that, we're just like, Lord, come quickly. When we're young, we're still ambitious. We, don't, we haven't really experienced all the heartache of the world. And so we're more apt to like live for now. But I think what begins to move that is when people actually experience enough of life to realize this earth is not my home. I, I want to go ultimately to where the Lord is in heaven. Mm -hmm. It's not a death wish. I, you know, I want to emphasize <laughs> right. that. Right. It's just this desire in God's timing to go be with him where heaven doesn't have all the heartache, problems, and sin of this world. You talked about A Thief in the Night. Yeah. Um, for some of us, I was born in the 70s, so I wasn't really watching movies yet, but for some of us, it was left behind, right? Yeah, the, right. Kirk the Kirk Cameron version, because yeah. the other mm -hmm. one kind of bombed with right. Nicolas Cage. Yeah. Um, but has Hollywood even come close to giving us a glimpse of what it will be like? I, I, I don't think so. I mean, I haven't seen any great movies that really, you know, uh, have captured the essence of what the Bible teaches. And it's hard. It's hard, mm -hmm. too, because, you know, John is writing in the first century uh, in the book of Revelation about events that are going to happen, you know, millennium from when he was writing. And so he's trying to put language on things that it's hard for him to even describe because the Lord is showing him visions of things down into the future. So he's writing in terms that sound really odd really to us. So, so then Hollywood tries to capture that. Christian, you know, who have tried to portray the second coming of Jesus and the book of Revelation and all this. And it's just difficult to take all of this, the, the, you know, all of the impact of the book of Revelation and translate it into the movie screen. So I just don't know that it's ever going to really be done well. The only thing that's going to really be done well is when we experience it and see it. Right. Well, until then, it's all an artist's rendition of what the book is. Right. Okay. And um, lastly, Gary, I just want to do something a little kind of fun with you. Yeah. I call it a okay. rapture lightning round. Sweet. Um, and when I heard you teach this morning, I'm like, oh, yes, I'm going to do it with Gary. He's going to love this. Okay. Right. So these just questions really, they really don't matter. We know what really does matter, but they're fun nonetheless sure. for us yeah. to talk about. Okay. Yeah. So real quickly. So the trumpet blast, what do you think it'll sound like? Like do a rendition. What's it going to sound like? <laughs> If I had a shofar, I would blow my shofar. I think it's okay. going to sound like a... You know, I think it's just going to be one clear sound. Who's going to hear it? 
Uh, I think the world's going to, I think, but who knows? I think everybody's going to hear it, but only Christians are going to go because those who are left behind are going to be like, what was that? I think it's going to be something they hear, but only the Christians go. When you're, I love this. That's my you, guess. Okay, you mentioned you're from D.C. area. Yeah. So when the rapture happens, yeah. what will CNN say happened? <laughs> what will Fox say happened? Yeah, whatever they say, it'll just be fake news. That's what they're going to say. <laughs> it's just going to be like, well, there was just some uh, the nuclear explosion. We don't really know. They'll make something up. They'll make, They'll something, make up. something up. Okay, lastly, if we want to hear more from you, yeah. more teachings, more prophecy, where can someone go to online to hear more Gary Hamlet? Yeah, so we, we have a YouTube page. Um, and on our website, cornerstonechapel.net, there's a whole teaching library. Um, I'm, I'm on the radio too with Cornerstone Connection. I think it's cornerstoneconnection.cc. Um, so, but our webpage is probably the first place to go and then they can scroll through the teaching library. Go to our YouTube, our YouTube page from there. It's cornerstonechapel.net. Wonderful. Gary Hamrick, yep. thank you so Thanks, much Gary. for joining us. I appreciate it. Okay. Thank you.